Hey everybody, welcome to Anarchy, the podcast about anime with two brothers. I'm Ben. And I see to it that we don't use low-hanging fruit. Except you used low-hanging fruit. Isn't no, it? I didn't. You see things? No, no, I said I see to it that we don't use low-hanging fruit. Okay. What fruit is low-hanging in your eyes? Bad jokes. Good. Like Hotake Tuesdays, like so low-hanging, it's terrible. It is terrible, it's a really bad joke. Extremely bad. So what have you been up to since last we spoke, which is like a month and a half ago? Yeah, it sounds about right. Well, there's Christmas. There was a Christmas. Did you get anything fun? Yeah, I got little little boats. I got little boats. They're boats, but they're little. Little boats. They're not Azure Lane boats, are they? No, they're not Azure Lane. That's good. They're victory at sea boats. They're on little popsicle sticks. Oh. I've been painting them. Uh, what else? New Pokemon game came out. Started playing... Arceus, where you accidentally get isekai You get accidentally isekai Now, is that the same as the well, Pokemon? You get isekai Are you getting huh? isekai as a Pokemon, or is this a different no, game? No, no. No, no. This is you getting isekai into the past of Pokemon. Oh. <clears throat> yep. Oh, wait. You are you trying to get back, though? Uh, you know, I don't know. That would be a fairyland, not an isekai. It would. But you seem fundamentally in, uninterested in the question of whether or not you can get back. Uh, you have a phone that's shaped like God that says, hey, go catch all the Pokemon. You're like, well, nothing to it. Okay, I've got a couple questions about that. Yeah. You have a phone that's shaped like yeah. God, you say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's correct. What is God shaped like? Arceus. Oh, okay. Fair enough. Arceus is Poke God, so your phone is shaped like Arceus. No, he's not, because like I have him in a Pokeball somewhere, I'm pretty sure. Nah, well, don't we all? I, I question a God that you can stick into a Pokeball. And he chooses to be in the Pokeball. Ah, I guess that makes sense. He chooses to manifest himself when that particular Pokeball is thrown. Activates? Do, do, do Pokeballs activate? I don't really know. I don't know. I just know you throw them like a grenade. I just know they're nuts. Also, also, yeah. new magic set comes out next week. I have heard, actually, now that you mentioned that, I saw a, uh, a rumor that may or may not be true. If anyone knows about magic, it's you. Yeah. What do you have to say about? Oh. Uh, did you did you know Magic commissioned a Hatsune Miku song? Uh, for their new magic set. This. What is yes? That? This is real. What is yeah, this? That is a thing. Well, they commissioned a Hatsune Miku song for their new set. But, but why? I have so uh, many questions. Because it's, it's the Japanese set, so they commissioned a little Hatsune Miku song. So Miku Mikus. Oh my goodness. He's a little Miku. So do they make the Planeswalkers into Miku Miku dance characters? If only. But no. That's disappointing. And neither is Miku a card in the set. Uh, but my girl Tamio did get completed, and that's just a shame. Just a rotten shame. You know, now you've ruined my day. I was really excited about that being like a actual set, even if it was a joke set. So, I mean, they might. They may do a, a secret layer drop that's Hatsune Miku, in which case there's another secret layer I'm going to have to buy damn them for secret layers <laughs> but you know if it's a hatsune miku secret layer i've just been making pilot tokens because there's pilots in this set because there's mechs in the set and there's pilots that can pilot them so i need to make tokens mm -hmm. so it's all pilots. uh gundam characters i mean that's what i'm doing Good. they're not all gundam characters that first character is from muckross i get them all mixed up that's okay and also the hashtag is hashtag mtg neon because it's neon dynasty or destiny or whatever mm -hmm. uh but really it's MTG Zeon. I see. Zig, etc. Uh, honestly, I thought about making a joke pilot token that instead of this creature cruise vehicles as if it were power two or greater, have it say this creature cruise vehicles as if, it's, as if it were power two less and have it be Shinji. <laughs> that way he just he can't get in the robot. That's <clears throat> well played. Well played. Those are the best kinds of jokes. The only thing I've been doing is twofold. One is reading trashy mangas. And the yeah. other is playing. Are there a, any other kind? A lot of, a lot of play in uh, Genshin Impact. Just a lot well, of Genshin Impact. Got, seriously? Yeah. I can play they it. Gotcha. On, I can play it on my iPad. It's fun. Well, there you go. No accounting for taste. It's fun. What are you talking about? They made three billion dollars last year. I bet they did. All by selling digital NFT waifus. They're not NFTs though. They're just digital waifus. They're just digital waifus. Because everyone can have their own. Hey, I bought a dark saber, so that, that sounds better. Oh, good. Did you get it back in the plane all right? Oh, yeah, that was fine. Okay. Downstairs. It'll go wum. 
So over Christmas, I read over 1,000 chapters of manga. Okay. Totaling 18,000 pages. How exciting. It wasn't really. Uh, most of it was garbage. I don't remember half of these names already. Let's see if I can uh, remember any that, that, that were good or like really, really, really bad. I did read all of World's End Harem. Oh, it's why? awful. Yeah, I imagine so. Because I didn't want to watch it. So I read it. I didn't imagine it would be like good. It's not. It's real bad. It actually could have been interesting. But it tries to be like eight different genres at once. And it mostly just wants to be a softcore porno. I mean, yeah. So I think that's 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 secretly and slash not so secretly. That is its true genre. Exactly. Uh, let's see. What else was there? There was So So No Freein, which is about an so immortal so no elf. She uh, was in the party of heroes back in the day, uh, but now all of her hero friends are old or dead, and now she's wandering around the world. That's it. That's the whole plot. It's very, very good and very, very pretty. So I was going to say this is just girls' last tour, but really this is just elves' last tour. Yes, actually. With all of her... Instead of girls, plural, it's just elves as in belonging to one elf. Yeah, with all of her friends. All of her dead friends. Yes. I read a couple cute mangas. One was three years apart, where they're three years apart, and then they get married, and then it's adorable. They have a kid. That's it. There you go. It's wholesome. There's one more. I don't know if you know this. But the hot anime of the the season is the yeah. very niche manga that I found last year about yes. a guy that paints dolls and then ends up making cosplay for a chick. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, everybody's that's, talking about it. Everybody's talking girl. about it. Cute girl. Yep. Yep. Biggest waifu. Modding waifu forever, right? So I was reading sure. a, a manga about, it's called Chikimori is Not Just Cute. Okay. And it's about a boy and a girl who are already in a relationship when the manga starts. Nice, nice. And it's just them being better at relationship. Oh, that sounds cute. And if she's not the most waifu waifu that's ever waifu'd, I don't know who is. So I think it's going to be funny. Marin is waifu right now. In about a month, this manga gets an anime adaptation. Ah, uh, then we'll just move waifus. Yes, we'll just swap what? waifus swap over. Waifus. I mean, we could just finally get an anime of Tomo Chan as a girl, but that's never going to happen. That's never going to happen. What are you talking about? Sure. Be nice, though, wouldn't it? It would. Oh, I did end up reading all of uh, Wotokoi. Oh, Because not nice. all of it was adapted. Yeah. It just gets more cute. So I've heard. It, there is a marriage. I won't say who. I mean, that's fair. Yeah, if if any of these were going to be adapted into anime, most of them should never be adapted into anime. But I mean, yeah, I would imagine the the elf one. I'd be very interested in watching that because it's very very pretty. I'll put links to some of these in the show notes. You do that. Not all of them. In fact, of the twenty one here, I'll probably link like four because the rest are bad, and that's all I got to say about that. Well, there you go. I, uh, my wife and I went to go see Bell. Yeah, is that any good? Yeah, it's good. Oh, good. Um, Hosada still loves internet whales. Good. So that's pretty cool. Um, I don't think it's as good as Summer War, but it is extraordinarily pretty. I do like pretty. And it is all I animated, think it right? Yeah. I think it would have worked a little bit better as a miniseries than as a movie, because I think he bit off a bit more than he could chew, uh, but it's not bad. He's got a lot of plots to juggle, and he does okay a okay job doing it. I miss doing OVAs. And we had a good yeah. This like, would have worked a little bit better. Three one episode, one hour uh, a piece OVAs. Yeah, this, this this would have benefited from doing that. I forget what was the the pitch of Bell. Bell, it's Beauty and the Beast, but internet. But internet. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not creepy at all, right? Not particularly, no. Oh, good. Because it could be very easily. No, it's got a very good soundtrack. Soundtrack's very, very good. And uh, yeah, they do an interesting thing where all of the like on the Internet stuff is like, you know, CGI. Uh, but it's come a long way. Looks good. Someday CGI will actually be worth watching. 
Yeah. I'm dead. No. Most notably Japanese CGI, because for whatever reason, it's still kind of bad. Well, they don't put millions, hundreds of millions of dollars into it like we do. But we no. put hundreds of millions of dollars into it, and it still looks bad. So I would not say that. I think they spend way less, and it still looks bad. I don't know. Have you watched anything on Netflix lately? Well, I mean, there's going to be bad CGI TV shows for sure. I just mean like actual like high end. I mean, you can't say that the... The Disney CGI movies are bad because they're not well, poorly animated, I should say. Uh, your mileage may vary on the stories, but like the actual animation in them is quite brilliant. Oh, I was thinking more along the lines of like Avengers, Marvel movies, etc. Oh, just way too much CGI in those in live action films. Oh, well, that's different. Yeah, yeah. That's a different beast altogether. No pun intended. Um, just talking no. about Bell Beast. Well, we weren't uh-huh. talking about Bell, but uh-huh. we were a while ago. Yeah. Hey, you know what's beastly? Is it is it ghosts and or it's whatever ghosts. they are? Is? There are ghosts somewhere is like a bakemono, I guess. I don't even know. That's a good question. I don't think we'll ever find out. It's hard to believe that all of these are ghosts of people. I'd be that as it may, I guess it doesn't really matter. So what 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 did we watch that heavily featured ghosts? It was Mieruko Chan. Mieruko Chan. Which is strangely untranslatable, even though I, one can know exactly what it means. Not even her name. No. The girl who sees, basically. Uh, something like that. The adorable child who sees. It's who about a see. girl who is uh, perpetually playing, don't, don't look at me. Don't, don't look at it. Don't look at the thing. Don't, don't make it a, a face. She's also the bravest girl in the world. She's pretty brave. She's a good girl. Miyaruko-chan. You want to give the elevator pitch from Miyaruko-chan? Uh, she's a normal girl in high school, uh, but she sees ghosts, and she tries very hard not to react to the ghosts. The big thing is that the ghosts are absolutely terrifying. Hey, you know when we were kids, there's the book series out, right? Yeah. Uh, scary things, to, uh, scary stories to tell in the dark. You know how all the stories were like kind of mediocre and actually all not as scary, but we all freaking remember those ink drawings. Yeah, it's like that. Hey, these are like those. Yeah, they're very creepy. They're very creepy. What's funny is you got these really, really, really creepy monsters next to, I mean, not to knock the, the show at all, but pretty run-of-the-mill character designs. Yeah. Well, so in the manga, so one of the big things, one of the big differences between the show and the manga is they seem to have aged up Miko-chan and her friends. I mean, not really. They're all supposed to be high school girls, even in the other one. Uh, but in the manga, they're drawn a much more moe style, mm-hmm. where in the cartoon, the anime, she's drawn far more in a in a more sort of standard style, a little less moe blobby. And like I get it in the manga, the her and her friends being a little more moe style helps the juxtaposition of the monsters being that much more horrific by making everything else a little bit more cutesy. Well, everything else in the manga is done in a very outline style. Like, there's detailed yeah. stuff, but they're outlined. Yeah. Then you got all these monsters that are pencil shaded and they're mm-hmm. they're horrifying horrifying I'm, I'm actually surprised how much of the the horror aspect translated into animation because usually that doesn't work yeah. see junji ito collection yeah yeah but it, it worked for the most part i liked it it did it did uh the monster designs didn't i mean they're not as creepy as they are in the book but you'll get that they did a pretty good job i think that just comes to the territory of they're in color I don't know yeah. why that's the case. But I mean, sort I of in color, but not not quite. But, but all the monsters have colors now, especially the the big ones. Yeah. So little, uh, but a very muted palette. I do like how they also, I believe they use CG for the monsters and ran it at a slightly yeah, different yeah, frame so. rate than everything else, which yep. makes it just that much more unsettling. Makes them very very creepy. So what do you think, uh, Miyako Chain? Uh, her herself or the whole show? Oh, it's good. Who should watch it? Not my wife. Uh, anybody who doesn't like things that can be legit terrifying. It's uh, it's horror, but it's also a, a high school slice of life, in a sense. It also has a character who may or may not do things to cats. So that's a trigger warning. Yeah, it, it should come with a... Uh, definitely check on the doesthedogdie.com. <laughs> Or uh, Mia Ruko-chan. 
before you get into it. But no, it's good. Uh, it does a good job being partly slice of life and a little bit, uh, a little bit of horror. If I have one quibble with it, it's that yeah. it stops kind of in the middle of the main arc. And I don't know if they're going to do a second season. Uh, I mean, yes and no. They finished up what I would consider the first arc, which is really about that the 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 cat killer. Um, so, yeah, but the the main I, I arc. To that. be fair, the manga just wrapped up the main arc like two chapters ago. So, yeah, that was in December. It's kind of a nested arc, right? So, like the the sort of first arc and the main big overall arc are kind of nested inside each other. So I was worried they're going to try to shove all of the shrine stuff in the last three episodes. Yeah, into like one one last episode or something. But thankfully, they did yeah, not do that. they didn't do that. Um, so spoiler uh, land. Other thing, Let's do the yeah. spoiler Well, land. I was going to say the only other thing I'd say about it before we go into spoiler land is I do think that it has a tendency, especially in the beginning, just like the comic does, to be a little more fan service-y than it needs to be. Edgy. Um, yeah. I definitely get it in the in the manga. Like it's because like he didn't quite know what to do with his character for a while and was just like, this is kind of a funny joke. Uh let's get clicks by making it fan service y. And it's like, yeah, all right. I think there's partly that, but I also think it's kinda a bait and switch for the horror. As you expect, oh, this is kinda etchy, but also maybe it's a little spooky. Yeah. And so it sort of drags you in. Yeah. But the the longer it goes, the less and less like fan servicey it gets is the story itself. Yeah, several of my friends are like, "Oh, this is the etchy show of the the season." Blah blah blah. I'm like, "Eh, just wait until they see, get to the shrine; it'll stop." Yep. Yeah, I mean, it's a little more gratuitous than I would prefer, uh, especially like they had a choice in the anime to just n- leave that stuff out because again, the the manga kind of abandons it halfway through, except for the fact that Hana has large breasts. But the anime made a choice to lean into it. Yeah, more than it needed to. Anyway, spoiler land. How do you feel about Miko and her sad life? Poor Miko. Poor, poor Miko. In what way does she have a sad life? So she can see ghosts. They're creepy. Uh, she just kind of deals with it. You know, I mean, I, I enjoy the trope of, you know, there are horrible, terrible things that live places and you just kind of have to learn to, to deal with it. See the in state of the Babadook. You gotta live for that stuff. It's like, yeah, it just lives down there now. You, you feed it worms. It's cool. Just don't, don't worry about it. Don't ask <laughs> and that's her questions. whole life. It's like, ah, just don't worry about it. Granted, uh, I do like how every once in a while she can't tell if it's ghost or real, and then she'll be like, oh, it's fine. Hello. It's like, oh no, that was a ghost. Oops. Oops. Yeah, the way that the ghosts are handled is extremely unsettling. Because at first they're just creepy. It's like, look at that horrifying art design, et cetera, et cetera. But then you start going, well, what happens if she does look at them? Or acknowledges that she sees them. We do know that they go on the attack, but we've also seen that ghosts can't hurt people. But we don't know if they can hurt people that have acknowledged their existence. Well, we know that they can kind of half possess people. We do in know that. this world. But is that by choice or not? Uh, We're also not really sure how any of the spiritual world works because Miko doesn't either, which is for the best. I think it is It's like, well, there's clearly some of these ghosts are people. Some of them are not. Maybe they're just standard yokai. Some of them are just grotesques. I don't know. And then you got your terrible shrine God. Well, and what's even more terrifying is the fact that like, Mi- uh, Mi- uh, Miko-chan can see them way more clearly than like everybody else. Most people just like see kind of shadowy blobs or maybe an ill-defined like, oh, it's kind of got this kind of shape where she gets to see, you know, all of it. Yeah, she's got a friend who can sort of see things, Yulia. And she can see yeah. little things, but she can't see the giant horrifying you can't see things. the more powerful ones that are almost always the most more powerful things which is kind of weird you'd think that the big ones would you know have more power to be seen but it seems like the yeah. opposite maybe they have more power to remain hidden yeah i think it's one of those things they're they're more in the it's kind of like how close they are to the physical realm i guess mm-hmm. the smaller ones are much more close to the physical realm where the bigger ones are much more in the spiritual realm i think the other thing that's great about miko is we never, in the manga or the anime, we never get the sense that she's like some kind of chosen one. No. She 
just gets his quote unquote gift one day. Yeah. And that's it. She can do whatever she wants with it. Sometimes she tries to help people in certain circumstances, but most of the time she just tries to ignore everything and becomes a badass in doing so. Yep. I just want her to have a nice time. She's not having a nice time. It'd be nice. I kind of hope she learns a little bit of magic. That'd be nice. You need a break. I also want Grandma to come back. Godmother? Yeah. When Godmother comes back, that's going to be fun. Uh, let's see. Hana is her best friend. Miko's best friend. Her best set of boobs. That is Hana's entire character. At least for this arc. She, uh, she is a very hungry pair of breasts. <laughs> yep. Hungry pair of breasts. But she has a very strong spiritual aura that attracts ghosts because they want to, like, feed off of it. We think. We're not sure because it's also shown that that aura destroys ghosts. It can destroy weak ghosts or roast weak ghosts, but strong ghosts are attracted to it. Delicious. Yeah. She doesn't really serve much of a purpose now. She's kind of there to be some kind of stable anchor for Miko. Because Hana can't see yeah. nothing. Oh, no. She and can't she's the shit. happiest girl in the world, even though ghosts are molesting her and following her around and trying to eat her head. Yeah, you'll get that. Kind of gross. Kind of gross. Also, she eats a lot because apparently spiritual auras consume a lot of calories. Evidently. So if you want to lose weight, uh, become a spiritual medium, I guess. Well, I think that's just something you're born with. Or it's Maybelline. You never know. Uh, that's true. Now, there is somebody else who can see ghosts, kind of. It's Lu Yulia, and she got the yeah. same gift, but like when she was real little. And she's been acknowledging the little ghosts all the time, and nothing's ever happened to her. Uh, it's mostly because they're the weird little ghosts. I feel like those are more... Not yokai. They're more like the little spirit things that inhabit forests and stuff. Yeah. I forget the term for them. But they're not yokai. They're little commies, I guess. Yeah. Mostly harmless. Yeah, they're mostly harmless. They, they can lead you to some, some bad things, but they're, they're, they're mostly a little harmless. Mostly steal bottle caps. Yeah. What I like about Yulia is how she misinterprets many of Miko's things because Miko not only she tries very hard to never acknowledge not only do these things exist right but that she can even see them in the slightest so she tries to keep it all in the DL and uh trying to convey that to to Yulia does not end very well and Yulia thinks that Miko is some sort of like superhero super powerful mob like well Yulia has a medium. real big Bad case of Chunibyo. Like, uh, that's true. Like real bad. Of course, she does have a power, but she sees herself as like, I'm going to grow real strong, and become like, I don't know, the savior of ghost kind or something. And then when she recognizes that Miko has this stuff, she wants to like form a team or whatever. And then she realizes that Miko is way more powerful than she is in the site. But Miko doesn't really want it and just wants to keep it, like you said, on the DL. And so she's trying to convey this to Yulia, who just rec translates all that as you're threatening me or yep. you're going to kill me now, aren't you? Of course, it didn't help that when they first met as characters, uh, Miko choked her out, which is funny. Yeah. The anaconda drop or whatever it is. Yeah. Venom drop. Is she likes macho men. She does like macho men. Was Yulia useful at all in this season? No, no, no. I think, no. I think they're towards the end. She could see a little more. I don't think Yulia can, but I think she just opens up more. I think Miko just slowly opens up more to Yulia, letting her know that, hey, no, like, I really do see stuff. And you're better off not seeing this stuff. Yeah, or mentioning it or trying to just don't let people know. Because, like, you can see some stuff, but you're not you're not seeing you're not seeing like like all like all the stuff. Speaking of all the this stuff, this is like some bad stuff out there. Let's talk about the main antagonist of this particular season, yeah, which is the teacher Zen, redheaded guy. 
I yeah. it has been so long since I read the first part of uh, Miracle Chan because a chapter comes out like once a month, yep. and this was chapter like fifteen or something. We're on chapter. It was 40 a while now. ago, so it's, it's a while ago, and I had forgotten that he existed. I got to re-experience the whole terror of this dude. Yeah, they like they do they do a good job with this sort of bait and switch with him. Very good because I was taken in until like when the show wanted me to know. I was like, oh, oh yeah, but I thought he was a bad no. guy for no, a long time. No, he just likes cats. No, no, he likes cats. He is set up in like episode three or four as this guy kills cats. Yeah. He tortures them. He's an animal torturer. And you're like, oh, well, yeah, don't give him this cute, adorable kitten cat. Give it to that sweet Yakuza guy who has scars just because he likes cats too much. He loves cats. And the cats are like, I'm a cat. Meow. And scratches him in the face. You know what? I just realized something. The show did a pretty good job of prepping, priming us for that because Miyako goes to that one uh, cafe um, to meet Hana. And she sees this guy who has a uh, hanging on ghost which is clearly like an mm-hmm. old ex or something. And he's obviously a perv. He's a creep. And he ends up meeting his date after trying to hit on Miko for a while. Meets his date. And his date has just a whole bunch of ghosts following her around. <laughs> yeah, that's good. And you're like, Ugh, that's terrible. And then you meet this guy who's got all these cat spirits hanging around him. And you're like, oh, shit, this guy's bad news. Miko doesn't have to say anything in show. You just know he's bad news. Yeah. Because he's got a bunch of like creepy, yeah, dead animal ghosts. So you and Miko out. come to the same conclusion, and you're like, "Yeah, don't give the cat to, to that guy. Let's give it to this Yakuza dude, because that guy looks nice, but he's got shit going on." Yakuza. Guy, let's not mean, judge people got... by appearances. Yeah, even less literally what we just did. Yep. And then we find out that uh, his cat spirits are not cats that he killed. And it took a long time to get to that point. Because a, uh, a, a big spirit shows up when uh, this guy shows up at school as a substitute teacher and tells Mieriko not to look at the guy. And the first time that happened, I thought, oh, well, maybe it's a helpful ghost. Because a couple ghosts have been helpful in this show. Yeah. So maybe this one's trying to warn her not to look at him because he's so evil. Turns out that's not the case. Turns out his mom was terrible. Yeah. Yep. Horrible, evil spider lady. She killed a cat. I don't like people that kill cats. Now, I could have I could have sworn that in the manga, he had tried adopting cats before and her ghost had killed them. And that was all the like hangers on ghosts he had. See, I, th- I could just be misremembering. I think that could still be true because in the show, it was a throwaway line. But it was like he had tried to adopt a cat. But every time he found cats, they were either already dead from the abuser that he ultimately finds. Or uh, he brings them home and then they die. Yeah. Now, he says that with, you know, they're already hurt or they're sick or something. But there's also this crazy ghost hanging around. That, you know, isn't all nice. Yeah. So... It could still be true in the show. I choose to believe that it's still true in the show because that uh, that mom was a terrible, awful person. Yeah, no, she's really terrible. I don't. I didn't like her at all. I <laughs> hated her, which is very good. That's okay. The cute little fox demons kill it. They do. About those fox demons. I don't think they did as good a job with the fox uh, fox girls in the show as they did in the comic. Like, I, and I know, like. Again, art style translations, but I just feel like the the way they look in the in the comic are just like way creepier. See, that's okay. The the shrine beasts, you got the kami, and then you got the two mikos. That's the part when I said earlier that they're in color. Those were the things that I had in mind when I thought, you know, that they're in color, they have less impact. Yeah, it's true because their features are still there. Uh, their creepy little mouths, their weird eyes, their long hands. But because they're like yellow and shimmery and they kind of are translucent, you can see into the back, you kind of lose that detail. Yeah. I mean, I do like how they do like different auras for different things. Like a lot of the evil ghosts have more purpley uh, black auras and like the 
the fox uh, creatures from the shrine have kind of the more golden. Yes, which her dad had as well. And we've seen a couple yep. other spirits that have the golden auras and they seem golden to be or like good. a light blue. Yep. And so we're primed to think that the shrine guys are pretty good. They've been helping Miko so far. Definitely not some kind of trap. I wish we had gotten more into that arc because the shrine is very, very interesting. But yep. to do it justice, we need another cur. But here we are. Yeah, you need another need another season to really get into the into the uh the ghost arc. I also feel like wasn't there and again, it's been very long since I read the manga, wasn't there a time where they tried to go back to the shrine and it was gone? Yes. Yeah, I thought that pretty, and I couldn't pretty remember. Pretty positive. I was like Maybe that was another manga, but I could have sworn that she tries to go back to the shrine and can't find it. Yeah. That's what I thought the last episode was going to be, that she's going to get up there and it was just not there. No, but I, I think that I wish they hadn't done that in that last episode. The dream where they like, yeah, and they show you like the the God of the Mountains, like final form. It's not good. I don't like that. Yeah, I didn't care for that. And I couldn't remember if that happened in the manga. Actually, no, she had that dream. It doesn't. I mean, she tri- no, no. She just tries to give things to it, and it, and they piff. They just get angry. Yeah, she tries to sacrifice something to them, and they just, and it just rots away. The thing I like most about the shrine t- stuff, just like everything else, is we don't understand the rules. Yeah, it's not like there's some prophecy, and we understand it, but the characters don't. We have no idea, and Miko has no idea. So when she's like, oh, I'll give him some, granted it's a dream sequence, I'll give him some uh, gifts and they'll be happy. And they just get mad. And you're like, well, why would they be mad? You know, what's, what's, what's the rule here? Yeah. All we know is three times. That's it. Yep. Not even, not even what three times, just three times. She assumes it's helping her three times. But who knows? And they did help her three times. So... Was that the rule? But yeah, they don't do the... I thought they didn't do the movie thing in the show, and they don't, which is a shame, because the little movie thing's really creepy. Which little movie thing? Oh, where they're sitting at the, the, the new Totoro movie, and there's a giant evil ghost in front of her. Oh, yeah. And she's, like, crying at the movie, but not at the movie. Mm-hmm. The ghosts are really stupid. Hmm? Oh, yeah, because they're always I mean, I she gets them to get off her back pretty easily. I would assume if you're used to not everything like when you're used to nothing being able to see you. I, then I assume that you would just assume that no matter what you do or no matter how people react, they just don't see you. I guess that's true. I guess it, it makes the the shrine that much more terrifying because all the other ghosts are. Animalistic and single minded. There's no, yeah, here it there's is. no here actual it is. malice behind the other ones. They're just driven by bestial instincts or whatever yeah. grudges. This, this yeah. shrine stuff, there's intelligence behind it, which makes it creepy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I found it. It's chapter 27. She tries to go back to the mountain, but she can't find it. She gets surrounded by ghosts. Uh, the, uh, the fox girls kill some ghosts, and she tries to make an offering, not at the shrine, but there, and then they rot away. I knew and it. then she finds grandma and then uh, got a uh, godmother is just like, let's not be on the mountain because this is bad. This is bad. mountain. And then they come back down. And that's what I thought they were going to do in the show was going to have godmother be like, all right, let, let's let's go home. I was like, they don't have. Yeah, I wish they hadn't done that. It's kind of like and now they've kind of tied themselves in a bit of a knot, too, because then when they do the reveal, if they get a second season, they're screwed. Kind of like how in um, Shadow House. They showed stuff that never happened in the manga, and now they have a second season, and now they've gotten themselves in a bit of a pickle. I think they can still get themselves out of a pickle in Miyako Chan because, at least in the manga, I felt like up in. Well, this is going to be spoilers for manga. When certain final encounters occur, they seem a lot more solid in the manga than they did previously. So maybe they'll do the same in the show. The thing was sort of kind of revealed, but he was that weird translucent thing. Uh, that's fair. So, yeah. eh. Also, we were primed to think of what the shape is supposed to be because we've seen it in the manga. Yeah. If you haven't seen that, I don't know if there was enough 
detail unless you like pause it to, or like, something to like to like really be able to like read what it is. Yeah, I suppose that's fair. Because we we do have the benefit here of hindsight. You know, it's good that manga. That's true. Everyone should read the manga. It's very it. good manga. It's out in the States. Go buy some copies. Not only that, the chapters are long manga chapters. I'm used to like yeah. 10, 12 pages per chapter. This dude does yeah. like 24 to 30. And they're creepy. Very creepy. He does puts a lot of effort into those monster designs. They're very good. I wouldn't say he's Junji Ito level, but he's pretty close. Yeah, they're pretty high up there. Is there much more else to say about Miyaruko-chan? I'm excited about where this new arc in the manga is going. I know, right? Did you read the Raw for... A Raw just came out, like, today. Oh. No. But the, the new creature, I don't want to say anymore, weirdest thing I've ever seen. Okay. I like, I like the way it's going. I can talk about it after we finish. Yeah, no, I've just seen... I just read, you know, 38... Oh, I'm two chapters ahead. Or 39, I guess. But yeah, it's, uh, we need more horror. Oh, no, no, more no, no, horror no, 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 shows, no, please, that are good. Yep. Yeah, I, I have not seen 40. I've not seen 40. Well, what are we going to watch next time? What are we going to watch next time? How about we watch something a little le- uh, something just as cute, but a little less terrifying? Show me, son. Yeah, and, yeah, right? Let's do that. Let's you said less terrifying. Not Jimmy's pretty terrifying. Also, there's Yandere. Oh, there's Yandere. Well, you say that. I'm not so sure. Yeah, there is a Yandere. Mm. It's probably not the same caliber of Yandere as uh, you are probably preferring, mm. but there is one. Mm. Mm. But we'll see. Oh, we'll find no. out if the Yandere stacks up to your whatever your scale is you use to rate those things. No, fair enough. All right. Talk to you next time. Anything else? Is that it? Okay, now good. Bye forever. Bye. Bye.